You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 5th of July and I'm Roland from Milford. For the inflation watchers out there, there was a bunch of relevant data out last week. In the US, the ISM Manufacturing Index was released, within which were some really interesting data points. The Prices Index, which measures how fast manufacturers' input prices are increasing, came in at 92.1%, which is the highest index reading since July 1979. The Employment Index component of the survey contracted, as companies are really struggling to attract and retain labour. Another one that's easy to miss was a report released by the US Department of Agriculture. This showed that acreage planted for corn and soybean was materially below expectations. This is coupled with already tight inventory levels leading to a strong rally in the price of these soft commodities. Finally, you had the US job data out on Friday, which had a little something for the inflationists and the deflationists. They added over 1 million jobs, however it was adjusted down to 850,000 for seasonal purposes, which was still well ahead of consensus. In addition, wages grew 0.3% month on month and are annualising 4%. Despite this, deflationists are pointing to the high unemployment rate in the US as a sign the Fed will not taper sooner than their previous meetings suggest. We're dubious of this as inflation pressures are clearly mounting. Turning to Australia, job vacancies for the quarter to May were up 23% quarter on quarter. This series continues to set new records. Interestingly, there are the fewest number of unemployed people per vacant job ever on record. House prices also continued their stellar run in Australia, increasing 1.9% month on month, taking the annual growth rate to 13.5%. The monthly pace of growth is easing, but that's still very strong, and eventually conversations around macroprudential measures will increase. Turning to equity news, IDP Education acquired British Council's Indian operations, making IDP the sole English language testing company in India. IDP believe the transaction will be 13% accretive. However, this is before synergies, and also before the pricing power a company has when they become a monopoly, which, which they now are. Therefore, the actual accretion is likely much higher. Telstra sold a 49% stake in Telco, which owns and operates their mobile towers. They sold this minority stake for a punchy 28 times EBITDA multiple, which was really impressive and was well above what the market was expecting. Given the company is trading on 8 times EBITDA, to us it really highlights the value in these Telstra assets. Looking forward, we've got an interesting week ahead. The RBA meeting on Tuesday will be very closely watched, as it's clear the economic recovery has been very sharp domestically, with the unemployment rate almost touching the magic 5% number, which is a number the RBA quote as nearing full employment. Despite this, they've been quite dovish, so you'd have to think they begin taking a more hawkish stance and begin to bring forward the tapering timetable. Finally, OPEC discussions were delayed again, with a decision on their level of production for the next six months expected tonight. This will have implications for the oil price, which has run pretty hard over the past quarter, so watch out for news on this tomorrow morning. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.